One of the most familiar ideas in the world is that matter is made of atoms and that chemists study these atoms and many of you no doubt have used chemical symbols and formula but when you ask where did this come from it all came from an obscure North Country English schoolmaster John Dalton. He was a self-taught guy he didn't have much apparatus, he had to make do with a lot later hand, and if you've ever been in England you'll know it rains, and if you've ever been in the English Lake District you'll know it really rains, and so what lies to hands is clouds and rain. And so John Dalton observed what was happening and um, wrote a book, Meteorological Observations and Essays, and this was his attempt to work out what was going on with rain, water vapor, clouds, sunshine, how did it work? And being an ingenious guy, once he started thinking about that, you sort of think about little bits of water, you can see the drops, but you know, what are they made of? And so you get down to the ultimate atoms that compose this, and the chemical atoms, something you probably know as H2O. Well, that's John Dalton's thinking that there's something that we could call H and something we could call O and they would fit together. So Dalton pursued his meteorological thinking and the more he got into it, the more he got into this chemistry of sort of, well, what are these things? Now Dalton was a Quaker and Quakers, you know, are people who are very plain people, plain spoken people, and they love to stay in touch in networks. So Dalton, as a schoolmaster, was recruited into Manchester, big new industrial city, and there to be a tutor in its theological seminary. And there he pursued his inquiries, now in a big town with plenty of people around, and of course he wrote to other people around the country. He wrote a series of letters, and if you're a Quaker writing a letter, every letter is the same. It's kind of handy. You never say, Dear Joe or Dear Fred. You always say, Respected Friend. So the Chemical Heritage Foundation has a unique series of Dalton letters addressed to different people, but every time it's Respected Friend. And by the time we get from his meteorological observations in 1793 to his 1803 letter in Manchester, he's talking about the new chemical doctrine I have lately promulgated. Uh, he's on to something and he's developing a whole theory of chemistry, of atoms, of what they might be. He's a very visual guy. So he does something unique in its moment, but something with, it's the ancestor of what you see today. And in 1808, he finally publishes his new system of chemical philosophy, part one. He's got so much he wants to tell you before he can tell you anything that he actually only manages to write part one of the whole thing and even then it's 350 pages and finally, just at the end, he finally gets to its atoms folk and they kind of look like this and he, he draws out for you the atoms and how they look and if you just mentally substitute for his symbols the letters C, H, O, whatever it might be, the things we're familiar with, that's what Dalton's doing. And for the first time ever, we've suddenly got a language, a way of thinking about it, a set of formulae that advance chemistry tremendously. And from that day to this, chemistry has been done on that basis. If you come to CHF, you can see these books, you can see the unique letters that Dalton wrote about these things, and you can see some really interesting things, one of which is a letter to his friend in Liverpool saying, respected friend, this is now another guy, he's saying, gee, why don't you tell your friends about my book and get them to buy my book? Um, because if you're an obscure provincial schoolmaster type, you know, the, the New York Times probably isn't about to publish a review of your book, so you have to say, hey friends, how about buying it? How about spreading the word? So you can see Dalton putting out the word, and you can also see in a wonderful, unique in all the world example of the combination of uh, thrift and, um, and savvy, 
he prints up what we would call a flyer for his book. This is the only copy in the world of this flyer. It's the only copy that survived. You know, flyers you tend to give to people and then look at it and throw it away, put it in the trash. This one copy in all the world has survived because, and being a thrifty Quaker, he used them to write letters on. So on the back of the flyer is written a letter to somebody, respected friend, so on and so on and so on. Because it was a letter, the person who received it kept it as a letter. And miraculously today we have in the Chemical Heritage Foundation this one thing in which Dalton quite clearly says that the third chapter is on chemical synthesis and tends to place the whole science of chemistry upon a new and more simple basis than it has been upon. Very modest words, but absolutely true. He totally transformed our way of thinking about what goes on in chemistry.